I was uh, I was entertaining uh, locally from when I was about 10, 13, and then I uh, I went to the working men's clubs. Somebody saw me and gave me a date at a certain club over in Plumstead. I was only 14 then, and I was getting eight and sixpence for 20 minutes, and one and sixpence encore money. So that made your money up to uh, 10 bob, which uh, at the age of 14, it was very good. And after a while, when well, that gets round, it's the bush telegram goes around very, very quickly. And uh, then you get other dates coming in, you know, gigs were coming in and all that place. And if I could get four, you could go from one to the other in London at this particular time, and you could do 20 minutes at one club, opening the, opening the show, and you could do 20 minutes closing the show at another one, and open the show at the second half of, at some other one, and close it somewhere. So you've got four shows. And if you've got your encore money with it, you see, you could make two quid in a, in a night. And if you did it over the weekend, four quid, that was a. Uh, in those days, I'm talking about. God, God, years and years ago, uh, it was a lot of money. That's without what you could pick up at the clubs and pubs in the in, in, during the week. Uh, first of all, I had a job. Uh, I was uh, worked at uh, Hatton Garden in Johnston Matthew. Uh, uh, I was making uh, radium needles, you know, platinum radium needles at that particular time. So I was doing that job, and then I started doing work in men's clubs. And because uh, the after a while I couldn't, do, I built up such a, a round of working men's clubs, uh, I couldn't do the two. So um, I had to elbow one. So I, ch I chose the shows business. My career started from there, and uh, it went on very rapidly. It went from there, and I graded on to first then it a cine variety in those days. They were, they, were, they were the cream dates of, uh, of, of those days. And then I went from there. Um, but you, when you're starting, like I just said, you've got to keep working. You've got to make a living. And it's once you get started and it builds up. It takes a long time, but once you do, uh, you're set. But I, I, I was a, a vocalist and a piano player and accordion player. I wasn't, certainly wasn't a comedian in those days. But how people uh, asked me, how did you transfer from that into uh, comedy? Well, that was when war broke out and I had to go in the army. And uh, I wrote a show, like sort of a little concert party in the army. And I, I got a group of fellas together. One was a tenor, lovely voice and a few more. And uh, I, re I read the show out and they laughed. And I said, well, the review, they said, yeah, I said. He said, I said, there's only one snag. And they said, what's that? I said, we need a com com comic. <laughs> and they went, oh, God. And, they said, and I took it that I was the comic. They said, so we had no one, and that's how it's not. I had to go on that night when, when I'd, we'd rehearsed. And I went on that night, and it's, I always remember this. It was as though I'd done it all my life. Just went on chatting and uh, telling a few jokes um, uh, about the officers, and uh, which made all the boys in the army laugh and things like that. And I, I took it from there, and I thought, oh, I like that sound of laughter. So I went from there, and uh, after you've been doing it a long time, you you get more experienced, and you, uh, you throw that out, put that in, and that, that's how I developed as, as a comedian. And it was tough, believe me, going down the army camps trying to make them laugh. <laughs>